You're awesome, God. Man, I love, I love those two songs. It's like a little, little one-two combo, you know. I'm going to see a victory. And I love that reminder that our victory isn't in our own strength. It's not in, I'm so great. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in Jesus who overcame death, who overcame the grave, who is alive and well today. Come on, somebody. Is there anyone in the room that's grateful for Jesus? The front two rows are. Is anyone else grateful for Jesus this evening? Come on. Hey, we're just going to take a moment just to pray together as a faith community um, because I, I love that song. I'm going to see a victory. And, you know, I love that uh, the, the lyric and the, the bridge, I suppose it is, where it's like you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Um, I think that's such a powerful thing. And that's what we really believe God can do. Uh, but there's a bunch of people at the moment who are in the middle of that uh, what, the, what the enemy meant for evil, yeah. Maybe that's what you're in. There's people up on the screen represented. Um, just things in their life that it's like, man, it's not looking good. It's not looking great. But what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to join our faith. We're going to believe that God is bigger than those things, that God can step outside natural laws and natural boundaries, that our God is a miracle God. Does anyone believe that this evening? And so what we're going to do is, we, I, don't need to, I don't need to pray for you. We're going to just pray together. So whether it's inside or whether you want to just whisper out under your breath, just take a moment, just pray for those things either on the screen or maybe you know of something, maybe you're even facing a need. Let's just take a moment together to unite our faith, to believe that God is a miraculous God, that Jesus is working, that when we, even when we can't see it, Jesus is working. So let's, just re, let's do that. Releasing faith believing together that Jesus is a miracle working God, believing that Jesus has the final say, believing that no matter how bad it looks, Jesus can bring good from it. And Jesus, if anything tonight, we're just saying that people facing these issues are not facing them alone. Not only are we standing with them this evening, Jesus, but you are with us in our darkest trial. And we just really believe that you're at work we believe for good outcomes, for healing, for breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, why don't we praise God for what He is about to do in people's lives, what He's already doing. Hey, and you can grab your seat if you say hello to someone. If you don't, stand up the whole night, please. No, not really. We wouldn't make you do that. That'd be pretty cruel, wouldn't it? Um, hey, I'm really excited to speak this evening, something that I guess... I feel like I've been living a little bit this week, and, and so I hope it's encouraging to you. And just before we jump into it, just want to let you know about something really exciting, and that's that I guess we're, uh, we're soft launching our, our Heart for the House season this evening. We're soft launching. Has anyone ever seen someone soft launch a relationship? Have you ever seen that? It's like, uh, I don't know if you've seen these memes. I've seen it happen where it's like the girl posts a picture of a coffee, and there's just like a guy's knuckle in the corner. And it's, it's, it's soft launching the relationship. They're not ready to go out there and be like, this, we're in a relationship, but there's, there's someone around, you know? Or it, it'll be like a little post with like, you know, the sunset's so beautiful. And then there's just like a guy's silhouette in it. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, who is it? Um, so we're doing that with our Heart for the House this season this evening. Um, and, and just to let you know that I guess we're together as a community, we're just putting into, I guess, what our future is. We own a bunch of land around here, and our vision is to, I guess, build a hub for humanity where people can come and find, I guess, whatever need they have met. And the first, or well, the next step in that for us is a, I guess, an extension to our car park, and we're also wanting to put in a childcare center. So the plans for that are slowly ticking along, uh, but we want to be able to, like, really powerfully invest in the next generation in a super practical way. Um, so I just encourage you to pray about that. There'll be some media out in the next week um, or so, but maybe just take some time to pray about it and consider how you could be a part of that. Um, it's really, I think it's really exciting that in 50 years' time, we can look back and be like, we were a part of what God was doing back then. We can be the, we can be the OGs in, uh, in, you know, a couple of decades' time. So it's like I was giving to Heart for the House before it was cool. You know, we're like the, we're, we're like the generous hipsters. So anyway, I'm going to get onto my message before I say anything else weird. And hey, I want to talk about tonight, I want to talk about having a great big life. Turn the person beside you and say, a great big life. A great big life. Does anyone here want to have a great big life? Yeah? 
I hope, I hope we all want to have a great big life. I hope no one's like, I'm just content living a small and insignificant life. And, and I really believe um, that it says, in, it says in Scripture that God has put greatness in the heart of man, in the heart of people. And I really believe that God has great things destined for your life. No matter what your high school teacher said, no matter what your parents said, God says that you have great things destined for your life, that He wants to do great things through you. And I, I, I want, I'm one of those people, right? I really am believing that God is going to, I really want to live a great big life. I don't want to just get to the end of my life and be like, oh, it was somewhat insignificant. This might be morbid, but I want to have a big funeral. Um, not, not, not in a way of like a prideful way, but I want to actually leave a legacy that is bigger than myself. That's not about me, but that's about God having changed people's lives that were around me. So if you're with me, I hope you're excited about living a great big life because I think God has that for all of us. Um, and I, 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 first of all, I, I wanted to see, maybe show of hands, who's ever been like upgraded on a flight? Has anyone ever been bumped up? Yeah, a couple of people, a few of us. We are the lucky ones, the lucky few. And I've been fortunate enough. I used to live overseas and I did a lot of travel. So it happened to me a couple of times. And can I just tell you, it's, it's, an, it's a wonderful experience. And it's hilarious when the stewardess comes to you and they say, and it usually starts with, I'm really sorry. And you're like, oh, no. Like, what's happened? Have you lost my luggage already? I'm not even on the plane and you've lost my luggage. Um, and, and I'm really sorry, but the plane is very full. And you're like, oh, no. Like, am I walking? Like, am I swimming? And the, the plane's full. Would you mind sitting in business class? And it's like, on, on the inside, it's like, of course. And on the outside, it's like, well... It's pretty inconvenient, <laughs> but sure, I would love to have an extra meter of legroom uh, and, and you do it. And can I just say that the world opens up to you when you go in business class, because for me, flying a lot, uh, you get a little bit over airports, sleeping on airports, in, uh, on airport chairs that have not really been designed to sleep on. You know, you get to the airport, you're hungry, the vending machine's super expensive, um, you're kind of just sitting around on the floor waiting for your flight. And after doing that a lot of times, it's kind of like flying's not always the most pleasant experience. Um, you know, or you get on a flight, you know, we would all potentially have, a lot of us would have a, a, a horror story of a flight uh, where things just didn't happen. Mine was probably, luckily it was a short flight, but the child behind me uh, did something in their nappy and the parent just seemed to be unable to smell it for an hour and a half and <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't awesome, you know. And I've got kids, so I know it sucks flying with kids, okay. It's, it's stressful, you're so afraid, but on, if your kid goes, it's, it, you know, you need to change. Anyway, uh, so, so my picture of flying was not that incredible. And then I remember getting upgraded, and, and what happened when I got upgraded was not only do you go from, um, you know, a wooden bench to an F1 driver's car seat uh, as, in far, as far as terms of, like, an amazing chair, an amazing service. Like, you get on the plane, and they come to you. You don't have to push the button. They come, and they give you a menu. Before you even take off, you have the menu, so can I get you something to drink before we, we take off? And and I'm like looking for the prices, and it's like, no, it's all complimentary. And it's like, oh yeah, it's complimentary. I'll I'll have whatever you're serving. Like, yes, please. You know, you know when you just got to take it for all it's worth when you get free stuff. Like, you know, you don't you got to go all in. If it's free, I will finish the buffet. Um, I remember at a at a Taiwanese wedding, the culture is that you don't finish the food. They ser they serve ten courses, and it's rude if you finish the the food, um, because it kind of it shows that oh yes I was full before I finished kind of thing. And I remember, man, I went hard at the first Taiwanese wedding. I mean, I'm like four courses in, and I have cleaned every plate. Um, that's I, I guess if it's free, you got to go for it, right? Um, but the the biggest part that shocks me about flying business is you get access to like the, uh, the business lounge. And oh my goodness, it is, it is pretty well heaven on earth, the business lounge. So you get free stuff on the flight, you get free stuff in the business lounge as well. They, they get free food, free drinks, there's charges everywhere. You can charge your phone. If you forget your phone, they've got a charger for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, when your phone dies and you stare into blank space, they've got you covered. And it's just this whole new world. What I want to say is, and this is maybe a very obvious segue, but 
my life got a lot bigger when I discovered that there was business class. I realized that flying wasn't just this narrow little pigeonholed kind of thing. There was actually so much more to it. And I actually think in life, we can end up with a really narrow view of how our life is if we're not careful. And we can actually miss out on the fact that there's so much going on that we could be a part of if we just lifted our eyes from ourselves and started to look towards other people. So tonight, I want to talk about living a great big life. And I think the key to living a great big life is to live a life that's bigger than just me. A life that's just bigger than yourself. If you want to live a great big life, you have to live a for others kind of life. I love it how scripture puts it in Proverbs 11, 24 to 26. It says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Say larger and larger. larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Now, I think this is so cool. It's, it's so God's way of doing it, which is often what seems to us as backwards because it's different to culture. In, in what culture says is your, your world is bigger if you have more. The more you have, the bigger your world is actually going to be. The better the car you own, the better the house you live in, the more designer clothes you have, the bigger, the better your life is. But what God's saying in God's economy is the more you give away, the bigger your life actually gets. And I think it's because the more we give, the more we impact, and now my life is bigger than just myself. Part of my story is all of these people that I've impacted through my generosity. So generosity is key if we want to live a great big life. A generous life looks expansive, it's no borders, it's building others up, it's creating a legacy. I don't know about you, I want to live a generous life. But just like me and flying, if if we get too narrow a picture of what generosity of what generosity is, we can actually miss out on that great, big, amazing, expansive life that God's calling us to. And I think often, and maybe your mind, this was the first thing you went to as well. Often generosity is just seen as, as finance. Generosity is tithing. Generosity is when you pay for someone at the cafe. And these are all amazing things. But what, what I want to, I guess, share tonight is that generosity is not just a financial thing. Generosity is a lifestyle where whatever I have, I will give it to make somebody else's life better. And as I do that, as I give what I have received, I start to live a great big life. Jesus puts it like this on generosity. Now, this is a bit of an obscure verse, okay, but but hang with me. Um, He starts off in Matthew 10, verse 8. Heal the sick, and this he's talking to the disciples, right? So the disciples have been with him for ages, and and, and, you know, he's he's kind of giving them their commission and he's sending them out. And he says to them, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Now, I don't know, low-key, if that was me in the disciple circle, I'd be a little bit nervous because it's like, there's some big demands you've got there, Jesus. It's not like, go and have a good life and help people. It's like, cast out demons, raise people from the dead, and heal the sick. It's like, okay, Jesus, is he's, he's got a mission for us. But then what's cool is the next verse, kind of the next part of the verse holds the key. Freely you have received, freely give. So you want to see big miracles happen? You want to see people's lives transformed. You want to see the impossible happen. Freely give as you have freely received. So the question becomes, what have you received? And the second question, follow-up question is, how are you giving that? What have you received and how are you giving it? And I think we've got to, again, we've got to think bigger than financial. What has God done in your life? And what are you doing to make sure that other people have the same experience that you have? How, how has God encouraged you through someone? And what are you doing to make sure that people around you are encouraged? Because it's not just finance. It's our words, the way that we speak. Man, we've got to be generous with our words. If someone's encouraged you, make sure you pass that blessing on. If somebody has helped you, make sure you pass that on. If somebody has served you, make sure that you serve somebody else because generosity is so much bigger than just financial. It's what have you received? Have you received forgiveness from God? 
Maybe it's time to be generous with your forgiveness and with your grace and not just hold grace tightly for those people who deserve it, but to freely give like Jesus gives. So I want to talk about generosity tonight. I've got three thoughts and I hope you're excited. I haven't got a timer, so I guess that means I can preach all night. Um, I'm joking. I won't do that. I'll run out of stuff real fast. So it's, it's all good. Don't stress about that. Um, But I want to talk about generosity, and and I would encourage us this evening, as we speak, just to be thinking about, I've just got a full 25 minutes, but don't worry, I know I've already been preaching for a bit. Um, uh, As I speak, I want you to think about those two questions. I want you to think about, what have I received, and how am I giving it? And again, not just talking about financially, not just talking about practical things, but what have I received, and how am I going to give it? And, And what I love about God's economy is that, again, as we give, our world actually gets bigger. So keys to being generous that I have observed is that generosity is never accidental. Nobody is ever accidentally generous. Maybe you have been accidentally generous and overpaid for something um, or maybe given someone more than you meant to. But honestly, if you're not being intentional, it's not generosity, okay? If you forgot $100 at the restaurant and the server picked it up, but you actually forgot it, it's not generosity, okay? That was an accident. Generosity is never accidental. Generosity requires intentionality. It requires a decision that I will be generous. If you accidentally count, if you accidentally compliment someone, not generosity, okay? Accidentally encourage someone. I don't know if you've ever been accidentally encouraged. Um, I remember getting people come up to me after the service, after I'd preached, and they would say what I think they meant to be an insult. That was very simple. And I would say, thank you. I tried really hard to make it simple so that people like you could get it. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I'm joking. I'm joking. That'd be pretty harsh. Uh, <laughs> maybe I said that in my brain. You know when like two days later you come up with the best comeback and you're like, oh, I should have said that. That would have been good. Um, but, but it was like, it was an accidental compliment. I'm like, I'm actually complimented that you thought that that was simple because I tried to, make it, I tried to make it simple. But it's not generosity unless you're being intentional. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7, I love this, and this is what we're going to get our next two thoughts from. Is, is, uh, it goes and says, th- remember this, whoever <clears throat> sorry, s- sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Again, God's economy. You sow more, you reap more. The, the more you give, the bigger and more expansive and borderless your life becomes. Each of, you should, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart, and to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to, I love this, just kind of promise at the end, and God is able to bless, bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, for it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. What an incredible promise. If you give, you will have all that you need in every time, in every moment. What an incredible thing. Who wants to live a great big life like that? I want to live like that. And the key is, the key is to not give reluctantly or under compulsion or need I say giving to receive. It is to give freely and to do so intentionally. It said give what you have decided in your heart. Generosity starts in your heart. Generosity is about what's going on in your heart. It's not about a certain dollar amount or a certain amount of, I did it this many times, so now I'm generous. It's about deciding in my heart, freely I will give what I freely received. It comes from a decision. I will be generous. And I want to encourage us, if we want to be generous people who live a great big life, we've got to pre-decide No matter the situation, I will be generous. I've already decided it in my heart. I'm going to be generous. And again, not just with my finance, with my words. Uh, One of the things I've encouraged myself uh, to do, I guess challenged myself to do, is if I ever think something nice, I challenge myself to say it. Because I don't want to withhold that blessing from someone else, right? If I think it, I'm going to say it. If I think I like your shirt, I'll say I like your shirt. Steph Sweetman, I like your shirt. Um, because if I'm thinking it, I want to say it. I don't want to hold that blessing back from somebody. Because how good is it when someone says something nice? Isn't it great when someone encourages you? 
So I've challenged myself. My predisposition is if that I'm thinking something good, I'm going to say it because I don't want to hold a blessing back. I want to be generous with my encouragement. I don't want to be like, oh, they have to earn it, or they haven't done enough to quite deserve a compliment, or they did, they did all those things bad, but if, if they did that, no, no, I want to be generous. I want to be generous in the way that I speak. I want to be generous in how I'm responding to people. I've already decided I will be generous. And we had a cool conversation in uh, my life group this week. Shout out, life group. Check one out. Get in one. They're amazing. Your life will transform and you'll grow surrounded by people who care about your future, not just about how you're feeling presently. So get in a life group. Uh, and some of the boys were having a conversation about this because I got, I got called out by one of the, one of the guys. Um, he called me out for using one of their journaling in one of my messages. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, it was a good point. So I just, you know, I just vlogged it. But, but credit where credit was due, uh, it's fair enough. So I said, well, look, I'm preaching about generosity. So let's talk about generosity. And I just noticed a couple of the guys in my group in particular, my whole group is just people who are so generous. Um, but I just want to point out a few of them because they're, they're generous in so many ways, but specifically a few. Um, and I, so I had written down, and this is, also including someone who's not in my life group, but, but pretend he is, um, kind of is, is Gabe and Geordie. I feel, let's shout out to Gabe and Geordie. Geordie's not in my group, but I claim him. I claim him in my group. And they, I don't know if you've ever been around these guys, but they are the most encouraging people on the face of the planet. And I am convinced of that. I just feel like all I have to do is be around these guys and they are so generous with their words. They're, like, if they're thinking it, they're encouraging you about it. And I lo- what I love about the way they encourage is they don't just, like, cliche stuff. They're actually really specific in their encouragement, and I love it. Just the other night, Geordie, after, um, after our Thrive Night on Friday night, which was amazing, but just messaged me and just said, man, I so appreciate your leadership. And I was, like, so encouraged by that. And I'm sure to Geordie, it didn't even say Gordy. I'm sure to Geordie, <laughs> shout out Gordy. Um, it didn't seem like a, bad th- a, a big thing. But man, I was so lifted because somebody was generous with their words and generous with a couple of minutes to send a, t- a thoughtful text. And we were talking about it on Thursday night and talking to Gabe about it. And, and he kind of just said, yeah, I, had, I made a decision that I was going to be encouraging for people. That's where it came from. I just decided I want to encourage people. And it was the same with all the other guys in my group. Shout out Josh Staines. Might have called me out for something I said earlier, but it's all good. He's, this guy is like so generous and again, so many ways but especially in the way that he cares for people. He's so generous about the way that he actually cares for people. Since he's been in our group, our group's just like gone up a level because I don't naturally do care well. It's, it's not that I don't care. I just don't really have an eye for detail. So I take notes about things I need to care about and reminders. If someone's like, I'm getting surgery, I put it in my calendar so that I can be thoughtful and text them and say, I'm thinking about you. Um, so just a tip for anyone who's unorganized like me, calendar is, use it, it's fantastic. Um, but... Josh is just so generous in the way that he actually cares for people. And I think it's a generosity thing. It's not just a kindness thing. It's actually, and he was saying again, I've made the decision that I want to intentionally care about people. I intentionally want to care about people. I've predecided that I'm going to actually be generous with my emotional energy and care about the people around me. Now, you can't do that for everyone, but for the people you do it for, you can choose to be generous, not just financially, not just with words, but actually caring for them on a deeper level. And the other person who was in my group, who I, I, can't, I don't know if they're here tonight, was Ruben, my brother, legend. Um, he was talking about, he's like the most like generous gift giver. Like, I don't know if it's his love language or something. I don't, we didn't do the love language test together. Um, his brothers don't usually do that. Usually it's like married couples. So um, maybe we will after this, who knows? Um, but he, he's, he's so encouraging. When, he's so generous when it comes to gift giving. And I was kind of surprised by his answer because I was asking like, you know, why do you do that? Is it intentional? And, and his response was like, I've just decided that when I choose a gift for somebody, I don't look at the price tag first. I think about what do I want to get that person. And, and so he's not only is he generous financially, and then he said, you know, if I think of something and I go and see it and it's like five grand, I'm maybe like, all right, maybe I'll think about something else. Um, you know, there's obviously a limit to that. But, but, but what I was actually surprised by is not only is he generous with finance, but he's actually generous with time in that he puts time in to be thoughtful 
and to think about what's something that's going to bless this person. And he said, sometimes it's a challenge because you think of something and you buy it and you feel like, is it, is it enough? I didn't spend a lot of money on it. But he's like, generosity is so much more than just a dollar value. What's actually generous is taking time to think about something that's going to bless somebody. So some of the people I want to shout out, my life group's great. If you're not in a life group, hit me up after the service. We've got space for more. Um, always space for more. We might need to make it like three groups, but it's good. We've got space. So come chat to me. But Life group, so powerful, and just encouraged by these people in my life who were so generous, again, not just financially, and all these guys are generous financially, but generous in the way that they think, generous in the way that they care, generous in the way that they encourage, generous in the way that they give gifts. So I want to encourage us. Generosity is never an accident. It's what, had, what was in common in all of their answers was that they had decided that they would be generous with that thing. So what have you received And how are you intentionally giving that back out? Have you been encouraged? Man, become an encourager. And that's what happens. Whenever I'm around Geordie and Gabe, I feel like I get empowered to encourage people more because it rubs off. Um, So generosity is never accidental. Second thought is that generosity is the result of a changed heart. Again, when it comes to generosity, it's not about how much or how little or whatever. It's about what's going on in my heart. And generosity starts to flow out. It starts to overflow when I've had something happen in my heart. I love what it said there before. It says, when people give and when whoever sows uh, sparingly will reap, whoever sows generously will reap generously. And it said, giving not reluctantly or under compulsion. In other words, something has shifted on the inside. And now this person has actually become generous because they're not doing it because they feel like they have to. They're doing it because they really want to. And I think the changed heart comes from what we see in 1 Chronicles 29, 14. It says, uh, in the message paraphrase, I should say, but me, I love how it puts it, but me, who am I? And who are these, my people, that we should presume to be giving something to you or to God? Everything comes from you. Everything comes from you from God, all we're doing is giving back what we've already been given from your generous hand. It's a change of heart, a change of perspective that I'm not giving something to God. Everything belongs to God. I'm just giving back to God what He's already given to me. It's a change of heart. It's a change of thinking that, uh, what's the thing? The thinking shift is this, is that my life is not a pie. My life is not a pizza. It's not if I take one piece out, there's now one left. The change of thinking is my life is a river and that there's always going to be more if I just take out the dams and I let God flow through me. If I dam it up, my life is not going to be big and expansive. If I have pie thinking where I give some, I lose some. No, no, my thinking is I give some, I get some because God is generous and my life is a river. I'm actually letting God flow through me. And I think if, if you can show God that you can give it, he'll make sure that you've always got it in your hand. If, if Again, it says in the Bible, the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, money is not the issue. The issue is money having you, money having your heart. You can have money if you can and show God that I can give it. I can be generous. God, whatever you give to me, I will give it out. And if God sees you're going to do that, he'll give you more. If you need encouragement, start encouraging people because God is going to encourage you as you encourage other people. If you need to be lifted up, if you need good friends, be friendly because if you can give it, you can get it. That's the picture of God's economy that my heart has now changed. And I'm not giving from compulsion. I'm recognizing that all I have I owe to God. Everything in my life is because of Jesus. And if I have that heart change, I'm now actually free to give. And God is free to give it to you. I had a really cool, just like a simple example of this. Um, And I've been thinking a lot this week about the, the blessing bounce kind of thing, a concept of like when God blesses you, like let it bounce on to somebody else. And just a short example of this, but we were at the markets yesterday. My wife has a business selling plants and um, we went to get some breakfast from the shop that was like two places up for us, Sh- uh, the stall that was two stalls up. Um, shout out Baker's Duck, amazing. Uh, and they have a stall at markets. And I went up and I don't know the people that work there, right? I have no, I've never met them in my whole life. And I said, I'll get two quiches. And she said, it's on us. 
And I was like, are you serious? Like, that's, you know, that's a lot of money's worth of quiches. And, <laughs> and, and she said, no, it's, it's, it, honestly, it's on us. We want to look after, you know, people at the market, essentially. And I was like, oh, man, I was like so blessed. And I walked back and I said to Talitha, like, I can't believe they just, I have no idea who that lady was. And she gave me two free quiches. And they were good quiches, man. Like, if you've been to Baker's Duck, they don't do bad food. It's good. And uh, I thought they only did sweet food. Newsflash, they do good quiches. So, anyway. Um, And funny enough, about five minutes later, a lady comes to start looking at our plans. And she's wearing, like, a coffee shop shirt. Obviously works at one of the other coffee shops at the market. And she's looking around. And she kind of picks out a few plants. And she's like... You know, I'll take this one and, and for my friend, and I'll, I'll take these ones for me. And, and I just felt God prompt me in my heart, and it was like, I gave it to you. It's time to give it, right? It's like he just kind of, this person at Baker's Jug just started this thing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let their blessing stop there. I want to let that blessing flow through me. And I'm like, you know what? You can have those plans. That they're on us. We want to look after our market folk, our market people. And this lady was like, oh, my goodness. You know, she's like, if you need coffee, come and come and get a coffee for us. And I kind of just felt like, no, just, just pass it on to somebody else. Because it's amazing if we show God that He can actually bless people through us. Man, He'll just keep it in your hand, hey. He's going to keep giving it to you if you're going to keep giving it away. If you want to hold it to yourself, man, get ready to only have that. You can hold stuff so tightly that you miss out on this great, big, expansive life because I'm just so focused on what's in my hand and so focused on getting for me. But if you can show God, no, I'm not a pie thinker. I'm not a pizza thinker. I'm a river God. You can bless me and I'll bless somebody else. If you can keep it out of your heart, God will always keep it in your hand. It comes from a changed heart. It comes from, I know it's from Jesus, and I want to pass it through me to other people. And it's not coming from compulsion. It's coming from, I actually want to do this, not I have to do this. And I just want to encourage you, especially if you're, so many people in our church are generous with their time. They show up here at four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. The worship team's here then. They're preparing for the night. People are in here. I think Jesse was in at like 4.30 or something, getting coffee and stuff ready. Shout out, Jesse. Amazing coffee. Let's give it up for Jesse on the coffee machine and Steph with him tonight, all the whole cafe crew. But they're actually generous with their time. They've decided that I have this time and I'm actually going to give it so that somebody else can be impacted by that. But can I just release any volunteer here tonight, anyone who serves and you feel like you have to do it, I'd encourage you, stop. Honestly, stop serving. If it's coming from a place of, I have to do this, stop and step back and take some time to actually receive from God. Because a changed heart looks like, I actually want to do this, not I have to do this. Generosity is, I want to be a part of this, not I have to be a part of this. You know, it's a, it's a joke around the place when it's like, I have to. It's like, no, no, we want to, right? We don't have to do anything. We want to serve God because as we have freely received Let us freely give. And let that be an encouragement to you. Maybe you're not a part of a serving team. I'd encourage you to consider it because you've received what people have blessed you with as well. As as volunteers have given up their time, as they've been here early, if they've set up, if they've done things that have gone unnoticed, as you've freely received, why don't you consider freely giving to be a blessing to somebody else? Final thought, which is going to be quick because I've got one dot point. So we'll see. Uh, but generosity, it's seen perfectly in Jesus. So if we want to talk about where do we get a picture of what real generosity looks like, I think it comes when we see Jesus. And we see Him not only giving everything for us in His life on the cross, even in the little things. I love this in John 13, 3 to 5. And, and it says, man, it says the key here is in the first verse. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand. So Jesus knows he has got it all. He has got access to everything. And what's he do with it? And it goes on, sorry, all, all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. He rose up from supper. They're at, they're at grilled, right? And he gets up. Actually, maybe don't do this at grilled, but uh, they're in a house. And he he laid aside his outer garments, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. I just think that there is a reason 
that before it tells us that Jesus got down and washed his disciples' feet, and this is not just a symbolic thing, right? They wore sandals and it was dusty. They weren't roads. Their feet were mank. Like, you don't want to be a part of those feet. Don't, you don't, you're not touching someone else's feet. It's gross now. It's even grosser back then, okay? And I, I don't think it's an accident that just before Jesus goes and does that, it makes clear to us that Jesus had received everything. He had access to everything. And his response was not to hoard it to himself, but it was actually to get down on his knee and wash the disciples' feet, to care for the to clean their feet, man. This is the this is God washing people's feet. And I think if we ever need a clearer picture of what generosity it is, that's it. It's Jesus on his knee, equal with God, washing somebody's feet. Man, if you ever catch yourself saying, I do enough around this place. I'm serving in enough teams. Let it be a reminder of Jesus saying, I've received everything, but I'll still wash people's feet. I might not, I, I have everything. You got, I've got all the time in the world, but I'm going to spend time washing somebody's feet. Man, that's just such an encouragement to me that there's, if, if I've decided to be generous, I'm not above anything. I'm not, man, I'm better than that. I'm bigger than that. Jesus was God and he still washed somebody's feet. Generosity is seen in Jesus and no more so than in Philippians 2, 5 to 11, final scripture. Have this mind amongst yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped. He didn't take it and say, this is mine. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus, who was equal with God, emptied himself for us so that we could find life, so that we could find forgiveness, so that we could find purpose. So if we need a picture of what generosity it is, of what generosity is, let's look to Jesus and let's think, what have I received? And what am I doing to give that? Have I received grace? Give grace. Have I received peace? Speak peace. Have I received blessing? Give blessing. Have I been encouraged? Have I been encouraged? Speak encouragement. Have I been blessed financially? Give financially and you'll be blessed even more. You want to be more blessed? Start to give and you'll receive. So want to live a great big life? The key is generosity. Final questions I have for us. I'd love just, just to take a moment, look inside yourself and ask, do you have a broad view of generosity? Do you consider other things to be generous or is it are you pigeonholed with it just one thing? Just encourage you, maybe think different, broaden your view. Second question, what have you received and how are you planning to be generous with it? Maybe what can you do tonight to be generous? What could you say to someone tonight or this week, tomorrow morning? What could you say that would actually be generous and lift someone up? Final thought, how is your heart when it comes to generosity? Have to or want to? Whenever you're giving, is it because you feel like you have to? When you're tithing, because you feel like you have to? Or is it because you actually want to? Hey, why don't you stand with me? I'd love to just pray for us as we finish. Jesus, we just thank you for people who are committed to living a life of following and honoring you. And we just really believe that as we honor you, as we are generous to the people around us, our lives are going to become bigger and bigger in Jesus' name. Amen. And hey, maybe you're here this evening and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Why don't we just keep our eyes closed just for one more moment. We'll do something just a little bit different. Jesus loves you. And like I said, He has given everything for you. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to fill you with love and purpose. And maybe you've never made a decision to go on a journey of following Him um, before. I just want to give you that opportunity this evening. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to count to three in just a moment. I'd love you to shoot up your hand if that's you. And just in this moment, you're saying, that's me. I want to I go on a journey. 
journey of following Jesus or at least know more about what that's about, um, if you could shoot your hand up, I'd love to just pray with you in a second. Um, but just the best decision you'll ever make. This, this is a really important moment. It could be a pivotal moment in your life of deciding, I want to follow Jesus. So that's you. Hand up on three. One, two, three. Right where you are, just shoot your hand up nice and high. Yeah, see that hand and those hands? Awesome. So good. So good. Four or five people. Amazing. See those hands down there? That's great. Six people. So good. I'm not going to labor this any longer, but if, just, if, if that's you and it's just your heart might be beating a bit faster and you're saying, this is me, I want to follow Jesus, would you just raise your hand? I'd love to pray with you. Awesome. Well, Jesus, we just thank you for all of these people responding to you. I just pray right now that you'd start to make yourself real in their hearts, in their lives, that, that, that as they go on this journey of following you, you would lead them into a great, big, expansive life. May they know that they're loved and that their life has meaning and purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't we give it up for all those people? That's incredible. So good. And hey, if that was you, Geordie's going to tell you what you can do next if you put your hand oh, up. Yeah. Or pray can that we 